Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to import data into Microsoft Access from Excel that contains multi-line data, that cells with line breaks in them. Today's question comes from Dean in Gaylord, Michigan, one of my Platinum members. Dean says, we've been storing our membership info in Excel for years with your videos. I finally feel confident enough to bring all this into access. Problem is, one of my sheets has the primary member's info, name, address, phone, etc., and all of his family members are listed in a single cell with line breaks. That's when you press Alt-Enter in Excel to get a new line. When I bring that into access, the names are all smashed together. Is there any way to fix this? Well, yes, Dean, I can teach you how to fix this, but first, let me teach you how Excel and Access are different in the way they store this kind of data. So let's say you've got a spreadsheet in Excel. You got your member ID, your first name, your last name, your phone number. Then you got your family members over here, okay? And you get this by typing in that and then pressing Alt Enter, and that gives you a blank new line. Well, what happens is Excel puts a line feed character there, okay? You can't see it doesn't have a little thing like that. I just put the LF there to show you. But there's a line feed character there, character 10 it's called. Okay, so everywhere you press Alt-Enter, there's a hidden line feed character there. Now, when you import this into Access, it's going to look like that. Okay, Access doesn't deal well with just that line feed character. If you use Access, all right, you can press Control-Enter to get a new line. But Access uses a line feed carriage return pair. Okay, it's actually called a new line character. It's actually two characters together. It's character 13 and character 10. Okay, so access needs that CR and then that carriage return character as well. So what we have to do is once we import the data into Excel or into access, we then have to say everywhere you find just a line feed character, we're going to change that into a line feed carriage return. So we put both of them in there. A little complicated, but I'm going to show you how to do it. First, some prerequisites. You should know how to import data, of course. You should know how to use an update query. We're gonna have to use an update query to change the data in that field, okay? And we're gonna use the replace function to replace one character with something else. I got three videos on how to do all three of these things. If you're not sure about any of these things, go watch these videos. They're free, there's the links, they're on my website. Go watch them and then come back here after you've watched those. Okay, so here's my sheet in Excel. Okay, real simple. And you can see if you want to add someone else, you just come down to the end here, you press Alt Enter. Okay, and you put somebody else in here like that. And now we've got another entry in there. So I'm going to save this. And let's go over to Access and import this sheet. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website if you want to. You'll find links in the link section down below. I am going to go to External Data. New data source from file and Excel. If you watched my import video, you know how to do this, right? We're gonna import the source data into a new table. We're gonna hit browse. I am going to browse to where my data is. It's on my Google Drive in my spreadsheets folder. And there it is right there. Hit open, hit okay. In this case, our first row does contain our column headings. I'll hit next. We're gonna import our member ID from the spreadsheet. We're gonna make that a long integer. And you can see there's first name, last name, phone number, family members. If you wanna make that long text, if it's, if you got more stuff in here than just simple names like I have, if you got like comments or, or a history of some kind, you might wanna make that long text. It doesn't really matter for this example. But you can see right here, our axis is already ignoring the, uh, the basic line feed character. Hit next again. Now, in this case, Access is going to add an ID. That's fine, right? An auto number should not be whatever this member ID is. You can keep your member ID, keep it as a separate field if you want, but let Access add the primary key for you. Hit next. What do you want to import this as? I'll call this my member T, my member table. Hit finish. And we don't need to save the import steps. All right, let's take a look at it. Member T is right there. There we go. We don't need that blank record. Six, sometimes that happens on the end. You get a blank record. Okay, and there's my family members over here. Okay, whoop, didn't mean to do that. There we go. Now, interestingly enough, if you 
do this, okay? If you come into one of these fields like that, you'll see that there's some extra characters on the end. If you zoom in with Shift F2, look at that. The zoom window recognizes just that line feed character. Then if you go backspace and change this at all and hit OK, look at that. It fixes it for you. Okay, but you obviously don't want to have to go down all of these records and change that. Okay, so I'm going to undo that and put it back the way it was. And we're going to use an update query to fix this. So we're going to say everywhere you find just a line feed character, we're going to replace it with line feed carriage return. So let's make a query. Let's go to create query design. I'll bring in that member table. And let's just bring in family members. And over here, let's make a temporary field. We'll make a calculated query field just to show what it's going to look like when it's fixed. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. And we'll make this a little bit smaller. Okay, we're going to make this, we'll call it X. And we're going to use the replace function. So we're going to replace inside the field family members, comma. What are we looking for? We're looking for line feed. Line feed is chr10. Okay, and we're going to replace that with a carriage return line feed pair that looks like this, chr13 and chr10. All right, that says find the line feeds and replace them with carriage return line feed. Hit OK. All right, I'm going to save this now. We're going to go fix member T, we'll call it. And actually, let's go fix member Q. This is a query. And now if I run this, you can see what it's gonna look like after you run the query. See that? Now that's the result we want, okay? But I don't want this just in the query. I wanna fix the table. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go into member T. Let's close this. Save changes, sure. Let's go into member T, design view. Let's make a uh, family two, we'll call it. I'll make that long text as well. Whoops, long text as well. Okay, we're going to update, we're going to write that one into that one. Okay, with an update query. Right now it's empty. Let's go back to our query, fix member design view. All right, now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to cut this part right there. That's the part we want, right? Cut that out. Get rid of that. Okay, we're going to change this to an update query. Okay, the field family two, I want to update it to that, okay, that calculated value that we created. All right, take that, put it in family two. Okay, let's save the query, and now I'm gonna run it. Okay, nothing appears to happen. I got my warnings turned off, remember? If you watch my, uh, my beginning tech help, the, the blank template videos and stuff, I show you how to turn all those warnings off. If not, you'll see, you know, you're about to update six records or whatever. Now let's go take a look at our table. And there we go. That family two field is now fixed. Okay. And now that looks how you want it to look in access. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can go back and delete this field, right? Design view. You can delete family members. And then if you want, rename this one. That's up to you. If you get forms and reports and stuff based on that family members table. And now there you go. It's fixed. The reason why I use a separate field is because I, if I goof, if I make some kind of mistake, I've still got the original data and I can just run the query again. I don't have to go back and import it again from Excel and do all that. So I just, I put it in a second temporary field and then once everything looks good, I delete the original field. So that is how you import the data, the multi-line data from Excel. Now, here's the next step. Here's the next question you have to ask yourself. What if you wanna store this properly in your database so that each one of these family members is a related record? right? You've got the primary member here and here's all their family members. The right way to store that in an access database is to have a separate family members table, right? And each one of these people gets their own record in that related table. That's the proper way to do it in a relational database. How do you do that? I'll show you in the extended cut for the members. In the extended cut for the members, I will teach you how to take all that data that's sitting in a notes field that should be individual separate records in a related table. That's the whole reason you're using access in the first place, right? It's a relational database. If you've got, you know, a person with their five kids, each one of those kids should be in a separate related record in a different related table. And I'll show you how to do that in the extended cut for members. I'll show you how to use a record set, loop through the members, 
peel off each one of those records that should be in the separate table, right, from that notes field. We'll use a little SQL, a little record set. 16 minutes long. Extended cuts. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download all my databases from these videos. So sign up today. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.